Hello, and welcome to our first Cisco Solutions Lab of 2022. I'm Aaron Shelton, the SE Supervisor here at uh, DNH, running our Cisco group of engineers. And I have with me today uh, the fabulous Mike Brooks from Cisco. He's a BDM with the uh, Collaboration Business Unit. Hey, Mike. Hey, Aaron, uh, so how are you? Gonna... Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm good. Yourself? Good, thank you. Very good. All right. So we've got some uh, cold weather throughout the U.S., but uh, we've got a lot of warm, wonderful information to pass on to you about uh, hardware and WebEx updates and uh, really a lot of good information. And uh, we have uh, a small amount of time to cram a lot of it in. So we're going to jump right in. Um, if, uh, if you have any questions during the uh, presentation, go ahead and write those in the question uh, box, and uh, we'll get to those at the end. And uh, otherwise, we're going to jump right in here. Uh, as we all know, a lot of the workforce is working in a hybrid environment. Uh, we're maybe going from home and office. Uh, there's a lot of times I'm running running into the office, but uh, uh, then popping back home for uh, most of my work. So that's that's the situation with a lot of people. And WebEx is one of those solutions that really helps with that. So, uh, Mike, just as a quick intro for, for mm -hmm. WebEx, where it's at now, um, what is it? What does it do? What's it doing best? Uh, what what should we know uh, at the outset here? It's <laughs> a great question, Aaron, and thanks for having me, buddy, right? So coming here from Buffalo, New York, it's around 20 degrees. Um, so I am a 100% remote worker. Um, and let's be honest, right? I, I live and breathe inside WebEx being a Cisco employee. Um, and over the past couple of years, as we've been inside this pandemic and we've moved to this hybrid or remote work type of environment, we've listened to a lot of people inside our partner community and understood that maybe re WebEx need to be refreshed a little bit. <clears throat> and boy, did we listen. So over the past three years, right, um, WebEx has been revitalized and refreshed. This is no longer your grandparents' WebEx or conferencing solution. There's a lot of things that have been done inside. And to be honest with you, we've got about a thousand different innovations over the past year alone is that um, inside web. Yeah, <laughs> just a few, right? Just a few that have been here. So just to give you a, an idea, right, of, of what you're looking at is <clears throat> there's a new interface that's here. Um, it is much simpler to use, easier to navigate around. And of course, there's always that really, there's always been that simple single button to join a meeting, a big green button that says join, right? How can you not um, understand or comprehend what that meet, that button does, right? It's to join the meeting. But to give you a few things that have really been <clears throat> revitalized and refreshed and some of the things you've added to it. So first thing is WebEx Assistant. As you know, um, inside our home every day, we've got an assistant everywhere. Some of you have Alexa, some of you have Google. Think of WebEx Assistant as basically just that integrated inside WebEx. We have the ability to voice command and tell the WebEx to tell, hey, WebEx, launch my meeting. Hey, WebEx, turn down the lights, or hey, WebEx, turn down the, the or close the blinds, or whatever it may be. So that's integrated inside the WebEx itself. We have translation, we have closed conferencing, um, noise detection on our end and noise reduction, right? So like I said, I'm sitting here in my living room today, the dog is barking and I'm sure you cannot hear him. My wife has the TV going inside the other room. I'm sure you cannot hear that. So with some of the acquisitions that we've done with like Babel Labs, that noise reduction has helped out considerably inside with this remote work that we're inside. Uh, whiteboarding is included. Um, breakout rooms in that particular case from an educational standpoint, for those of you that may not know what breakout rooms is, if we were inside, if this was a standard meeting and not a webinar and we had our 25 you know, attendees here and I had a task for 25 attendees to do, I could launch individual rooms, apply five, 10, five or six people inside each one of those rooms, assign that task to you and then you guys could discuss that task inside a separate room. And then when you fight your, your uh, discussion is over, I can bring you back into the main meeting and we can have another discussion. So a lot of different things that we're taking into consideration that strictly look at this hybrid work or remote work environment. And as we move into this, this environment, right, one of the things we're looking at with everything we said we do inside WebEx is we wanna make sure that it's flexible, inclusive and supportive because we realize maybe and hopefully fingers crossed we get back into an office soon there's always oh, going to be a remote participant 
<laughs> inside a meeting. So we want to make sure that they are part of that meeting and give them all of the tools that they need to become part of that meeting. So I encourage everybody to take the poll that's out there and let us know for, um, you know, the people that have WebEx, you know, state that you have it. For those of you that are looking at WebEx, let us know. Um, and, and as we start to move into some of this discussion that's here, um, you know, you'll hear um, a, a topic brought up of WebEx Suite, and we'll talk about that as well on some of the things that Aaron's going to kind of go over and talk about the suite. The suite itself pretty much is a WebEx separate approach to um, this hybrid environment. It is messaging, calling, um, <clears throat> and meetings, along with WebEx webinars, or socio as it's called, along with polling and some interaction, all combined together into a single SKU. So we're really looking at a variety of different things to accommodate everything looking at hybrid and remote work. Um, and then for those of you that are answering the poll now that is on the screen, for those of you that have WebEx, thank you very much. For those of you that are considering it or planning it, uh, there'll be some information that we'll send out afterwards and a nice little one pager for you to be able to get it under a not for reseller or 100% discount to bring it inside your environment to actually do all the testing and, and hopefully deploy inside your environment. So Aaron, I hope that kind of gives us a pretty basic outline of, as to where we're at and what we're talking about. Um, but I'll let you go from here to talk about some of the uh, newer devices and things that we have. Sounds good, Mike. Much appreciated. Uh, we've had so many great features added to WebEx over the past year, and uh, it's made my work from home life a lot better, uh, especially the noise reduction. That's easily my uh, favorite feature of uh, WebEx. Um, we're going to jump right into some of the hardware here. We'll cut back to WebEx after that, but uh, we're kicking off with the WebEx Board Pro. I, I remember the WebEx Board when it first came out as a Spark Board. That was, uh, it was one of the first really big new highlight products that uh, was gonna move to the Cisco Room OS with a lot of new features and stuff. And uh, now we've uh, upgraded that to this pro version, which includes a lot of new features. Uh, there's a USB-C pass-through uh, for sharing from laptops. It'll charge your laptop while you're plugged in. Uh, there's a new camera with an ultra wide lens. Uh, the original camera was sharp, but this one uh, even more so. Uh, what else do we have on this, Mike? variety of different things that are on here, right? There's two sizes, obviously your 55 and 75 inch that are going to be in here. Um, you know, there's the, you know, the, the new room OS that you're seeing on one of the great pictures here, along with the rolling cart. Uh, the new room OS has been, is, is, is a great rollout that is thrown in here, allows you to flip off into the side. If you look over on that first picture where the, uh, just the desk pro is itself, you'll see that little line on the right hand side, allowing you to touch screen that and go into, to look at a variety of different things that are inside here, uh, along with the, you know, the standing cart that's here. And let's not forget with all the devices that you're gonna be showing here, the interoperability between different conferencing solutions, right? Yes, I'm at Cisco and I understand that not everybody's gonna be using WebEx, right? There are some other conferencing solutions out there as well. Well, these devices work with those other conferencing solutions well, so the interoperability is here as well. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, it's a, a lot of good new features on that one. Uh, we've in our resources, like a lot of the products, we've added a data sheet for this product. Uh, so you can check that out as we go through things, download as needed. Um, we'll move out of the WebEx desk now. So WebEx board is fantastic on an office, but uh, those of us working at a desk want to have, uh, you know, the a wonderful uh, meeting environment there. So we have the WebEx desk, which uh, was preceded by the WebEx desk pro, which was a 27 inch beautiful screen. Uh, this is a little bit more uh, compact at 24 inches. It has a 1080p display. Um, and again, like the WebEx Board Pro, uh, we have the USB-C pass-through. So you can charge your computer directly from the screen. Uh, you can use it as a display with your computer. And when it's time to go to meeting, everything is there built into that uh, WebEx desk. Um, and we have, uh, we have five colors now too, don't we, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was hoping you're going to bring up the colors there. It's a great screenshot you got on here as well, right? So most people are going to say, wow, you're hopping onto the Apple bandwagon, right? And remember that this is an aesthetically pleasing device coming in at around 24 inches, and we want it to fit into 
your remote work environment, right? And, and, and it comes down to choosing a color that you would like. So we put a variety of different colors out here. You've got the blue, the black, the gray, the tan and the green that are in here. So it fits nicely inside any environment that you wanna put in here. Uh, but you'll notice this color trend uh, coming up on some of the other devices that you're gonna see here as well. So we're super excited about this 24 inch display. Um, it just fits nicely onto the desk and keeps the real estate on the desk where it needs to be. Definitely, and, and we've uh, I've talked to a lot of partners recently that are still working with customers that have DX70s, DX80s on their desk. Uh, this is pretty much a direct replacement for that, and uh, the the but the feature set is leaps and bounds beyond uh, what we had on the DX80. So uh, this is a really nice product line uh, for what it's doing. Uh, and then the just announced uh, very recently was the WebEx Desk Mini. So again, we have these uh, the color options. We have the front facing speaker. There's still the noise reduction built into it that uh, is pretty much second to none. Um, it's uh, now the the mics mic array on this one actually helps cut down background noise as well, doesn't it, Mike? So if it's on your desk or in your kitchen, it'll it'll filter out some of those sounds just naturally. Absolutely. So you've got that noise reduction kind of built right into it, right? It's that rounded base or that semi oval base that's down in the bottom that has the speaker in the front there and with the noise reduction built in. You know, think of it as like um, on my end here, I have this uh, Google Hub on my end here for just specifically for audio. Um, and it looks eerily similar to that. And it's got that kind of that noise reduction that's built right in there. And, you know, I, I'm going to say it, I, I think personally, it's the coolest innovative device we've had in a long time. Once again, remember with the colors and everything else and a 15 inch screen, we want it to fit into different areas inside your home. And it's not specifically meant to just maybe sit on a desk and maybe you want to bring it up into the kitchen. Maybe you want to put it into your living room. Um, very easy to carry. You'll notice on the picture on the left-hand side, there's this little handle that's up on here, right? So it's very easy to pick up. There's an integrated handle right put in there. It's got your single power cord that's popped right in there. So it's a really, really cool looking device. Um, and once again, all the features and functionality that you would find on the desk that we previously talked about are built right into the desk mini. Indeed, that's a very nice product to start with there. And then this one, uh, we, we've talked about this before, is a very exciting product. It's the WebEx Desk Hub, uh, which basically offers hoteling. So, uh, and uh, this is shipping now, which uh, mm. is exciting news. And then on top of that, a lot of us are starting to go back to work more often. And I think what we're gonna see in a lot of offices are hoteling desks. So you may not have a permanent desk, uh, but with this, you can walk in, drop your NFC mobile phone on there that has your work account on it. Everything syncs up, it has your meetings, it has your connections, and uh, you can charge your phone on it uh, with wireless charging. It has the, the charging for the headset. Uh, so a really good option as, uh, as folks start to go back to work and we maybe have common areas that we're going to use more often. Yeah, I'm going to expand on that real quick, Aaron, if you don't mind. Absolutely. So please. We were super excited as Cisco employees that work inside distribution or work with DNH in this particular case. Um, you know, this really gives us an option of a place to sit when we go into an office, right? So one of the things we always notice is if I ever plan a, a, a visit to DNH is because it's such a great place and everybody's proactively working there, sometimes there's just not a place to sit. Um, you know, I may end up working in a, in a cafeteria or wherever it may be. So in this particular case, right, this is sitting right on the desk. I come in, I pop my mobile phone right onto the device, which charges it at the same time. I log in with my WebEx ID and it automatically lines up with the laptop that I have at my desk, it shows me everything that we have to do after the day. Um, I can sit at the desk for 30 minutes, you know, and do whatever it is that I need to do. I take my phone off and the device resets itself for the next person to come into play. Of course, right, I might have to wipe the device down with all kind of COVID rules and compliances, but I've got my 730 headset that would nicely pop into that device on there. And it allows me to do whatever I need to do when I come into the DNH location. So super excited about this device. Um, and we realized that, you know, as partners are going back into the office, one of the things they are going to do is revitalize their workplaces and their workspaces. 
right? There's not going to be a computer at every desk any longer. It may be every other desk or every two desks, right? Popping this hub into that location makes it a universal location that anybody can come in and sit at and get their work done. So super excited about this device. Yeah, very definitely. And that's, uh, we've seen desktop go to the side a bit because everybody needs to be portable now. And uh, so this just fits into that and layers on top as part of your communication when you hit the office. Uh, we have one more honorable honorable mention on the hardware side before we jump into some of the WebEx features itself. Uh, this one, again, we had talked about, but it's <laughs> shipping very, very quickly now. Uh, the quality is fantastic on this. Uh, Mike, I think you're using one now, aren't you? One absolutely. of those WebEx cameras? Yep, absolutely. I'm glad you brought it up. As I said, right, I'm, I am at home down in my main office. I do have a desk pro that's down there, but sometimes I like to come upstairs with everybody. Being down in a basement with no windows kind of makes you feel a little bit isolated. So you come up <laughs> just to look out the window a little bit. So as I'm on my Mac today and I've got the 4K desk camera popped right up on here, USB, WebEx recognizes the camera automatically and flips it right over from the MacBook camera. 4K display, ability to just flip it over when I don't want to be on video. Um, it's just a really simple, easy solution to get that 4K video quality that comes through that we come, you know, we've come known for and we're used to from any WebEx device. So great product, great price. Uh, I encourage everybody to pick one up and at least have them inside their bag when they're ready to roll. Yeah, price is fantastic on this. Uh, and it's very easy to set up. Uh, quick cord connection, a couple other things, and it's ready to go. Uh, there is actually an application that goes with this as well. If you don't download it, you're fine. It works. But uh, if you download the application, you can even fine tune it. So uh, the white balance and uh, light balance and all that stuff is, is very good as is. But you can fine tune those to your environment as well. So uh, that application I recommend if you pick one of these up. And that's uh, that's a free download from Cisco as well. Uh, and with that, we're going to jump into some of the great new WebEx features. Um, kicking things off here is the uh, Socio, which uh, is a, a recent addition to the WebEx environment. And this fits in specifically with WebEx events. So we've had events where it's a, a one-to-many sort of communication forum. Uh, and this takes it up a notch. This is much more in the webinar style or uh, uh, even like a trade show that's, that's in a virtual format. It has those sort of capabilities in there. Um, there's a powerful web and mobile application for it. Uh, and there's uh, quite a lot that we can do there. Um, and then uh, jump here, the next slide. Uh, so uh, one of the things that it does have is uh, the event app itself is very intuitive. There's, uh, there's mapping, there's scheduling. They do have a ticketing system built in there that you can use uh, for participants. So if you want to have people register and get the ticketing with their mobile phone, uh, they can do that. So it does support some of those hybrid event sort of scenarios. Um, do you have anything to add on the, uh, on the web uh, app side of things here? Yeah, absolutely, Aaron. So Socio is part of an acquisition that we recently made. And remember, once again, this is all based around this hybrid environment. And we understand that, you know, hey, uh, events is part of everything we're doing. Nobody's been to an in-person live event. They've all been virtual. And I'll be first to say this, right? Planning a virtual event is a pain in the you know what. Um, <laughs> you know, and yep. Socio made this much easier for us to be able to bring this into this virtual event and um, scenario that you're all in. So from this particular motion, first off, the thing you'll notice is that you'll start hearing Cisco people refer to as Socio as WebEx webinars. Right, so there'll be a, a naming convention change coming up here soon to this WebEx webinar. This Socio product is actually built into the new WebEx suite, which Aaron and I are gonna talk about in a second in the next couple of slides. But I can tell you that if you were part of, uh, if you, any of you watched Cisco Live um, a couple months ago, right, that was over the Socio product. Um, you can see the big difference from WebEx events to the Socio product, very easy to set up your event, launch your event, um, actually integrate all kinds of different event apps like, uh, like Slido that we're going to touch about in a second from a polling standpoint. Um, there's ability for networking and ticketing, right? So if you wanted registration, all of that can be built right inside the app. 
All, all of your networking features are built into it as well, right? So while you're in an event, you wanna make sure that the conversation continues outside of a chat and some other areas. So we're extremely excited about this and we encourage you to take a look at this product as you're moving forward with your decisions around WebEx. And it's a very sharp layout from the administrative side where you're setting everything up, you can add modules, they're drag and drop modules that you can add to your event. Uh, and then on the user side, a beautiful interface, both for networking and watching uh, parts of the event that you're going to. Uh, in fact, the uh, the WebEx One event not too long ago also used it, and uh, this was the format that uh, was pushed out to all the attendees at that event. So very sharp and, and comprehensive product. It, uh, it takes the event, event center to the next level, really, for a webinar style event. And with that, we're moving on to a very exciting product. Uh, this is one that uh, I've, I've wanted for a long time. So now we have Slido and WebEx, and uh, this comes with any paid WebEx subscription. So you get the WebEx meetings, you can add Slido in. Uh, if you don't want it, it can be administratively left off, but it's there uh, and we encourage the use of it. Um, setup of polls before you go into a meeting are very easy to do. Uh, you can do that on the Slido page itself and everything will connect into your WebEx. Uh, or you can open up the soft application that's in the WebEx uh, meeting itself and build your poll directly in the meeting. So if you're in a meeting on the fly, you can create a poll and push that out to the uh, attendees of your meeting. Um, do you have anything else that you want to add on that, Michael? Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna. I'll just I'll incorporate in here a, a couple of cents, and I know you've got a great demo that you're gonna show here as well. So, sure. um, like I said, I look forward to the demo or the video that we're gonna show here. So, and 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 look, honestly, one of the things that I always thought was lacking was, you know, I go into a meeting in the beginning, and I'm always looking for an icebreaker, right? Sure, it might be a dad joke or something like that, or maybe the dog jumps up on my lap just for that icebreaker that's there, but you know one of the first things you call in is when I started like a word cloud, I'll go in, how is everybody doing today? And, you know, and they respond back with happy, sad, indifferent, whatever it may be. That gives me the temperature inside the room. And it gives me the ability to launch multiple polls or multiple feelings uh, inside that room to get an understanding of where everybody is at, where the attendees at. Do they like the content I'm providing? Do they not like it? Do they want to expand more? And it's not done inside just a regular chat. Um, or through an emojicon with a thumbs up or something like that. I can actually get a feel for the room inside that. So this is where we like Slido, um, and it really gives us that interaction that we've been so longingly needing. Yeah, it's, it's very powerful in that, that respect. And participants can answer their uh, the questions from their mobile phone. They can log into a browser while they're in the meeting, or they can do it from the meeting itself. So it's, it's very versatile as well. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and play the demo for you guys uh, to show you what Slido is all about. Now that Slido is seamlessly integrated in WebEx, you have powerful live polling and Q&A capabilities at your fingertips, right there in your meeting. In this video, we'd love to walk you through how to set it up and use it. So let's dive in. Before you get started, make sure that Slido is approved and enabled in WebEx by your system administrator. Update your WebEx app to the latest version and ask your meeting attendees to do the same. Once that's taken care of, schedule a meeting using WebEx, Outlook, or any other way that you prefer. Launch it and click the new Apps icon here at the bottom. Pick Slido from the sidebar and open it. Here's where you can set everything up as the host of the meeting. You can create six different kinds of polls, so let's just create a quick word cloud poll to kick off the meeting. Hit save, and there it is, our first poll. Create more polls or combine several of them into a survey by clicking the folder icon at the top. If you need to edit or duplicate your polls, you can find these options and more in the three dot menu. Now that our polls are ready, let's move over to the Q&A tab. Q&A is disabled by default, but we want to allow meeting attendees to send questions this time, so let's enable it. If you'd like to review people's questions before they go live for everyone else, you can turn on moderation in the review tab. This can be especially helpful at larger meetings. 
You can find advanced settings for polls and Q&A in the hamburger menu on the left-hand side. And now we're all set. When the meeting starts and other people join, Slido will be comfortably waiting for them in the sidebar. When it's time to activate the first poll, just click the green play button. You can initially hide the results to keep the voting unbiased. The attendees will then send their votes, and when you reveal the results, they will see them as well. You can see all the incoming questions in the Q&A tab. People can ask questions using their name, but also switch to anonymous, unless you disable it in the settings. They can also upvote other people's questions, so that the most relevant ones rise to the top. If you've enabled moderation, open the review tab and approve or dismiss the incoming questions. When you start answering a question, highlight it so that everyone is on the same page. When you're ready to move on to the next one, mark it as answered and it will go straight into the archive. Now that your meeting is over and you've collected many useful insights, you might want to export your poll results and questions. Just head over to slido.com, click log in in the top right corner and log in with your WebEx account. Open your meeting and then click on the analytics tab. You'll discover an overview of the whole meeting and you'll be able to export any data you might need. And that's it. A quick note, if you have a paid WebEx account, you will have access to all features of Slido. You can find more detailed instructions at community.slido.com. We hope that with Slido and WebEx, your meetings will grow more and more interactive, inclusive, and insightful. Okay, so as we can see, Slido, uh, like a lot of the recent uh, uh, features added to WebEx, is very easy to implement, easy to use, and uh, very feature-rich. It's uh, it's one that I've been excited about, and we set it up at DNH. It was, it was literally the flip of the switch, and everybody had access to it and was able to start going on it. Uh, we're going to move into the WebEx suite now, which we've uh, mentioned a little bit. Uh, now, this is very exciting. It's a great price point with a lot of product built in. Uh, Mike, why don't you cover what the uh, WebEx suite includes for us? Absolutely. So inside this WebEx suite, remember that this was purposely built to look at these all cloud type environments inside this remote work and hybrid work environment. We really wanted to take all of the things that are happening inside this environment, such as calling, meeting and messaging, Slido from a polling standpoint, um, socio from an event standpoint incorporated into a single offer and we've done just that with this particular offer so you will see this webex suite as an offer under the you know flex 3 top level part number in ccw where you can actually go in and pick this as an grant or as an option the great thing about it is it's strategically priced from a list cost perspective around $23.50 now hang on a second $23.50 isn't where this starts, right? There are significant discounts in there that actually brings the partner cost down to, I think it's around the $8 time frame, allowing you to sell it like $11.95 as suggested retail price to the imposter community. So when you look at that particular package and you look at some of the other competitors package, we are strategically placed to help you compete inside the environment against some of those other competitors. And with the set of products that we have built inside it, it lets you know that we're specifically focused on those cloud environments, bringing in all of the resources that you need. So we're super excited about this uh, WebEx suite of product. It should become your go-to offering when you're looking at WebEx for anybody that's looking at an all cloud environment. Yeah, it really is all inclusive and a fantastic price point. Uh, and the partner discounts are very good. So whether you're in Canada or the US, uh, we, our teams can help you get pricing set up. Um, the, uh, there's a little bit of uh, pricing differential between one and three years. So if you wanna even expand that discounting even a little bit further, uh, three year does that. And it does it on the 
on the uh, Flex 3 a la carte side of things too. Um, so looking at expanding the number of years helps your costs and maybe helps you bring in a little bit of extra margin with your customers. Um, now, one other thing that's as part of this suite and as part of WebEx calling in general is we have Cisco PSTN offering now, don't we? So uh, we can still go to the outside PSTN provider that connects into the WebEx cloud for calling, but uh, Cisco has their own option for this now. Yeah, and it's a, it, it's it, it's a great thing to think about too, right? So now, you know, sure, we realize that the hybrid environment is a multi-vendor solution, but there will be some of our end customers and partners that want that single offer solution from Cisco. They don't like dealing with the PSTM provider from the outside from a billing and invoicing standpoint. They just like to have this all-inclusive package. So with the Cisco calling plan offer that we can come into, we have these calling plan for outbound numbers at around $3.50, and then it's a dollar per phone number, right? Which is a little bit less than three cents a day. So when you're putting together a configuration uh, for the WebEx suite, definitely take a look at that, um, the calling plan kind of option. Um, and when we do follow up here, Aaron and I, we'll make sure to include information on how to uh, get information through our Sales Connect site on the PSD and offer itself. Absolutely, we'll we'll provide all of that on our uh, one pager that we send mm -hmm. out to everybody. Uh, there's a lot of good partner information as well. One of our resource links that we've provided is the calling help uh, link out to Cisco. So that, that's a partner help desk specifically for calling. Uh, they have a lot of good, good resources there. So if you're looking for how to do something, how to set something up, how does something work, uh, that calling help website is great for that. Um, and then of course, uh, DNH is a resource. You can contact us anytime as well. Um, and uh, we can help walk you through the options. And specifically when we're doing the WebEx suite build, um, we can get on a WebEx and go through all the options one by one and decide what your customer needs to, to make their environment work best. Um, so the, the suite really encompasses a lot. We're looking at calling meetings, messaging, polling events, and then socio of course, and uh, events alone as an a la carte product is a, a bit more expensive. So um, for, you know, maybe a third of the cost of that, you're getting all of this um, in one suite. So a fantastic uh, build there. Um, one note with that is uh, it starts at a minimum quantity of 25. Um, so maybe if you're doing a mom and pop, you know, one to three phones, it's it's not going to be the, the solution. But uh, anything 25 and over, uh, this is uh, probably going to be your go-to. Uh, the pricing is right in there. And even if they're not using the uh, cloud calling right away, it's there. You can flip it on when you're ready to go with it. And push ahead here a little bit. Uh, we have one more place that we want to mention. Uh, Mike, do we've, Cisco put together the project workplace. I've always admired this site and try and recommend it as much as I can. Um, what do we find when we visit the project workplace website? So I'm glad you brought it up, Aaron, because this is kind of a, a really cool tool that's out there. And like I said, it, it kind of goes underutilized. So I encourage everybody to go out there and check out projectworkplace.cisco.com when you're looking for information around the devices that we have. First point, right? A lot of the pictures that you're seeing on the presentation today for the devices themselves came directly from Project Workplace. So as you're working on marketing campaigns, maybe some e-commerce motion on your end, a lot of the pictures that you're looking for are going to be found on Project Workplace. But one of the good things that it's actually going to be utilized for, as we said, as we're starting to move into this, hopefully this returned into the office and we're revitalizing and reimagining our workspaces, uh, huddle spaces in some of the offices, there's some really good overviews inside here for you to take a look at. For example, if we're looking at a huddle space, right? What are some of the components of that huddle space that may be a requirement? And there are some really good pictures in there. It shows what a huddle space may look like. It could be, you know, um, you know, uh, a, a flat panel on the on on the wall with one of our, our our codecs that's inside there with the navigator product that's on there or, or the tool that's on the desk. And it could be some array mics. Um, and it just doesn't stop at the collaboration product as well. It also incorporates a lot of the other products that's there, such as their Meraki product and maybe actually some infrastructure product around routers and switches and how it brings that whole thing together. So it looks at an entire solution. Um, it's a fantastic site. It's always constantly being updated by encourage everybody to go out there and take a look at this site. 
Um, click on the devices tab up at the top when you're in there. It gives a complete overview of all the devices. All the data sheets are on there. Um, and then take a look at the workspaces tab to really get a good overview of what some of these new environments are going to look like inside your office. Yeah, I, I love this site as a resource and one of my favorite parts of it is the workspaces uh, and they include examples of everything. So you can click on a workspace that's going to fit 10 to 20 people. It'll give you the different options for that. Uh, and in some cases, it'll even give you a map of what that might look like when it's set up in a room. So uh, we have maybe a Kodak Pro set up with one camera facing towards a presenter, another towards the crowd and uh, we want to have the whole place mic'd and everything, they have drawings up there uh, that'll map that whole room for you and give you at least a template. Uh, you know, as we get into spaces, we have to customize everything a little bit, but uh, it gives some really good starting points for, for that sort of setup and then goes into the hardware that's going to be used in those spaces. So uh, we definitely recommend that as a resource going forward. Um, and we have another resource to tell you about as well. Uh, we've talked about the uh, cloud marketplace a bit in the past, and uh, we're moving on and up in that world and adding more product to it. We have uh, WebEx, Umbrella, uh, AMP will be coming at some point soon. Uh, Duo is also on the docket to be added. Uh, we have StealthWatch, and so there's several products now that are in this marketplace, um, and uh, it's a very easy purchasing process. Uh, so we do want to mention that. And then one benefit to you as a partner is that the pricing is set up front. Cisco has priced everything that feeds out to the marketplace as basically a deal registration pricing, and in some cases even better. So without having to register a deal, without having to wait for a quote and go through that whole process, everything's there in the marketplace. You build your order and, uh, and push it out to your customers. So it's a very quick turnaround from uh, you putting in the license seats that you need to when your customer can have everything en enabled. Um, we are going to show a quick demo of the marketplace. And so I'm going to hit the button on that. It was uh, something I recorded, and you'll notice it's under five minutes, and I've created a full order that's ready to go and push. Uh, so with that, I'm going to jump right into the video here. Here we are in the Cloud Marketplace interface. Along the left-hand side, as you add customers, you're going to see them over here. Uh, you can add new ones, of course. And uh, in this case, we have one already created, so we're going to continue with that. Uh, we're going to go down here and start a new service. So we click that and then select the service that we want to use. Uh, the search comes in very handy for this. So I want to add the WebEx Meeting Center, which is our Flex3 WebEx Meeting product. We'll do that, click Next. Uh, on this next page, you'll have the T's and C's for that specific service. Uh, each of our services in the marketplace will have this. And then we can see the ordering page. This is where we can actually enter what we want. Uh, in this case, I want to say 25 meeting hosts. Uh, so we add those. Your pricing automatically updates here. Uh, this particular subscription is for a prepaid 12-month term. Uh, we do have a monthly invoice 12-month term that's coming as well. So once that's available, uh, you'll see that on the marketplace is something that you can order. Uh, contact email, we'll enter that. This will be your end customer. And then uh, phone number for them. And provision email. Uh, this one, you actually want to use somebody from your organization when you set this up. Uh, that way you have access to their subscriptions and, uh, and also administrative control over the subscription itself. So you can go into WebEx, uh, the WebEx Control Hub is what they call it, and administer any of the accounts that you've set up on WebEx. Um, if they need to, you know, have some small adjustments made, some uh, customers, people added to the organization, something like that, you can do all of that for them if you'd like to. Uh, this will notify you when provisioning is complete. Uh, after this order is completed, you'll get a provision email, and uh, you will have to go through a few steps to finalize everything with Cisco, but once you do that, they're active and ready to go. Uh, by default, it's going to choose the same day that you're entering this, and usually you'll see the subscription provision email within a couple hours of ordering. Uh, but if you need to set this out up to 90 days, you can do that here. Uh, without Cisco account, if you're not a Cisco partner now, we're just enabling this on uh, WebEx and Umbrella. Uh, this is a new capability. It, uh, previously, you had to be a Cisco partner and have the CollabSAS certification to sell WebEx. 
uh, that's gone away for the cloud marketplace. We want to get you up and running as fast as possible. We do still want to get you up and running on the certifications and stuff, and we cover the test cost for that. And it's a very simple process, easy study. Um, so we'll, you know, we want to talk to you about that too, but to just get going, this does it. Uh, so we have our 25 meeting user licenses. We do have some add-ons that we can add here. Uh, one of them is WebEx Assistant. Uh, so this would be the uh, AI assistant that will help you out in meetings. It can do uh, closed captioning and things like that. Uh, you can just determine how many users should have access to that. We'll just say 10. Um, the add-ons uh, that we also have available with some cost are these. Uh, callback service will actually call your participant meeting participants instead of them having to connect to audio themselves. Uh, WebEx messaging, this is above and beyond the messaging that comes with the, your meeting hosts. So if you have 25 meeting hosts and you need to add 10 more people that just have messaging, we can do that. And finally, uh, video device registration, we can enable that and decide how many devices we want to register. This would be a WebEx room kit or something like that. Uh, let's enter two just to start with. Billing information, if you want to add a contract ID for your end customer, you can do that here. And then we'll click next. This will confirm your end customer detail. So you'll fill in anything else that's needed here potentially. We'll click next on that. And then we get to the uh, review page. This is the final step before actually placing the order. And look at how many total seats you have for the meetings. The additional messaging shows up here and the video device registration also shows up here. Clicking finish, we'll run this order and it'll go out to Cisco. All right, so as you see, under five minutes, we've built that order. Uh, we have uh, licensing for room kits. We have licensing for people. We have messaging licensing for extra people. And then we can add some of the extras on. So uh, very robust system. And there's just going to be more added over time. Uh, we're working with Cisco hard to kind of bring all the products that we can uh, to that marketplace. So we're going to see a lot there. Uh, and I think WebEx Suite, at some point in this year, we're going to see that as well. So that'll give you another order option for that. Um, but uh, it's a it's a really nice system. We have a great cloud team that backs that up and will work you work with you on uh, anything that you need to do there, whether it's Cisco or otherwise. Uh, we have a lot of products up in that system, so uh, there's a lot of good monitoring and voicing and and uh, work that we can do in that system. Uh, so without further ado, I encourage all of you to add some questions to the Q and A if you'd like. Uh, we're going to kind of start to wrap things up here a little bit and jump into the questions that we have here. And uh, I'd, we'd love to field any extra questions that you have on any of the products we cover today uh, or anything pretty much in the collab lineup. Um, so we'll jump into our first question here. Uh, how does a partner track and administer WebEx for their customers? Uh, do, Mike, do you want to take that one or would you like me to grab it? Yeah, absolutely. I'll go through this really quick. So. Um, first off, great question. So with WebEx, um, when you have a WebEx paid subscription, everything is managed from the IT side, administrator side through the WebEx control hub. So when you get an app, when you get your WebEx paid subscription, you automatically get access to the WebEx control hub inside this control hub. This is where you would do all your provisioning administering of that actual WebEx subscription itself, assigning the meeting and calling users inside this single location, single screen or single pane of glass, so to say. Um, and the same thing goes for when you're doing, um, you know, different discussions, say the end customer wants to try another component inside the WebEx environment. You will be able to launch a free trial for that particular offering inside and add it to that subscription and then convert that into a paid subscription after a 30, 60 or 90 day trial, depending on how you do it. So single pane of glass through the WebEx control hub. All right. Yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, setup for you. And it's very much like an MSP interface. If you're used to Meraki, uh, you can see all of your customers in there and, and go into each one, administer their uh, their setup. Uh, so very robust uh, setup there. Uh, we'll jump into our next question here. Uh, do the devices with 4K cameras transmit 4K video in meetings? Uh, and 
it's complicated. Uh, they do. They can if, if it's set up that way locally. <laughs> um, but when we're doing a, a meeting across the U.S., generally transmitting 4K video doesn't work out well. So it doesn't do it there. Uh, but in a, inside a closed network, you can do that. And uh, there are some situations where that works out very well. Uh, for the most part, though, those devices are using that 4K incredible camera that, that are in these devices uh, for zooming and focusing in on speakers uh, that are talking in a room. So if you have a room of 10 in front of your WebEx board, uh, that'll automatically focus in on somebody that's uh, speaking in the far corner. So uh, it uses that some of some of that extra resolution to uh, really build out the room and make the meeting experience better for everybody outside that that uh, conference space. Uh, let's see here. Do Mike? We'll give this one to you. Uh, do WebEx meetings and events require a minimum purchase like the suite? Huh. You know, I've been so focused on the suite, right? So um, the the WebEx meetings itself, right? You can start with you know a single user from a WebEx meeting standpoint. The suite starts off with the 25 user standpoint. So for WebEx meetings, feel free to start out on the low end. However, once again, remember the pricing standpoint here. So even with the um, you know the the small end of the market, I would always start with kind of suite. Um, in this particular case. Um, but once again, the great thing about this is if you on your end have a customer that's interested in the product, if you have WebEx internally inside your demo or lab environment via your NFR purchase that we're gonna, you can talk about, is you would have the ability to launch a trial to that particular end customer for any number of users that you would want. It could be the suite, it could be just meetings, whatever you want it to be. And then that's where you can wrap in all the rest of your lifecycle components into that to show them the benefits of WebEx itself. All right, sounds good. Uh, question here about the WebEx desk camera. Does that uh, work outside of the WebEx environment? Uh, that is something that does. It's a USB-C camera, basically. It does have a little mic built in if you want to use that instead of a headset or something else, but uh, it's, it's a USB-C connection. So you can connect that to your computer, use that with any of the services, including mm -hmm. WebEx. Um, with WebEx, of course, it has some of those features built in that you can fine tune with the app I mentioned to uh, really make it the best possible experience. But uh, it, it's a very functional camera and plugs into pretty much anything. Prime example, Aaron, right? Here yeah. we are, right? I am on the 4K camera with my MacBook and yep. I'm not in a WebEx environment. I'm on the ON24 platform, and as you can see, it works seamlessly, no problem. The resolution is fantastic. Yep, so again, very easy to set up, very useful, and uh, you don't have to look just strictly at Cisco environments for this one. It, uh, it works very well there, but uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a robust camera for all sorts of stuff. Um, the, uh, let's see here. How do I get set up to buy from DNH's cloud marketplace? And happy to answer that one. Uh, we do have a cloud specific site on dnh.com. So you can go to dnh.com slash cloud. We have that linked on our resources. Uh, and that introduces you to the team, the products that we have there. Uh, you can drill into a lot of the products and, and uh, see what exactly we're carrying within the line. So uh, we have some Microsoft and Cisco and all sorts of stuff up in there. Um, to uh, initially get started, or if you need a quote, or if you want to find out who covers your territory or product line, uh, there is an email address for that as well, and it's uh, Cisco Solution or Cloud Solutions at dnh.com. Uh, we'll have that in our resources for you, and we can include that on the one pager that we send out afterwards. But uh, there's there's a great team there, and they're they're constantly growing. We uh, we started with uh, five many years ago, and now we're up. You know, we'd hit 30 a little bit ago, and now we're uh, topping up over 40, 50 people on that team. And it's really to provide that robust experience. Um, and I'll, I'll mention too with the marketplace, if you have a specific product set that you want to combine multiple products, you want a laptop, umbrella, and WebEx all bundled together, and you're going to be selling a lot of these to one customer through, over time, you can work with your cloud rep to make that happen. We can create that bundle, and you can say, you know, pop in in March and say, I need 25 more of that bundle. They process it and you're good to go. Um, so we can help make simplify that bundling process uh, if you have a specific product that you're selling over and over again. So it's a nice opportunity to mix uh, mix different product sets, security and collab and and uh, the hardware that you need to do your day-to-day -day business. 
uh, let's see. I think we actually covered all the questions so far. Uh, I'll keep an eye on them for just a second here, but uh, I think we'll go ahead and start to wrap up. Um, we do have, as I mentioned, some uh, a lot of resources available at DNH. Those of you on the US side, our, our uh, Cisco team has the dnh.com slash driven site. Um, that offers all sorts of training opportunities with our team. Uh, it also has the Collab SAS authorization. We can walk you through those steps, uh, including test vouchers for it. So if you want to do that, it's, it's good information for selling WebEx and everything that goes with it. Um, and uh, it, uh, so we have that set up for you. you. You can request your vouchers and everything through that site. Canada team has some similar support, so you can talk to them as well if you're uh, from up north. Um, we can also uh, get you signed up for our threat hunt, threat, hunt, threat hunt workshops. I can almost speak. I might need some more tea here. Um, uh, Umbrella, we have some secure cloud mailbox training that's are coming up. Uh, February 10th, we're doing one of those. Um, so there's a lot of on-demand on content as well. So uh, we encourage you to use that site as much as possible. Um, and speaking of uh, February 10th, we have an eSports Solutions Lab coming up for that. So keep an eye out for invites. Uh, those will be sent out soon. Um, I don't know, Mike, as we wrap up here, we've covered a lot of detail, both in the hardware, meetings, everything else. Uh, anything else top of mind that you want to share with the group? First off, thank you very much for bringing me on. I appreciate the time. You know, great attendance Absolutely. level and a lot of great questions that are here as well. Um, I encourage everybody to get a WebEx NFR or not for resale. Um, you know, there's some questions in the space there that I think, in, and I didn't have a chance yet to answer it, then there were comparing against Zoom. And I encourage you to find out on your own. Um, you know, take a look at the, you know, get the NFR, bring it into your environment, feel free to do a worm on your end. I have plenty of things that I can show you that compare the two together. But all I can tell you is that not all conferencing solutions are the same, um, you know, and I encourage you to check that out for yourself. And one other question that was brought, it was pretty interesting. Uh, Rodney asked, is the provisioning handled through Cloud Marketplace? Um, I didn't know if you wanted to answer that one really quick or if you wanted me to. Oh, sure. Uh, so the Cloud Marketplace just initiates that order. Uh, so the final provisioning will actually go out to you directly as a partner. Um, so. Uh, once the order goes to Cisco, they process, and then provisioning comes from Cisco directly. Uh, so at that point, you can click the link in your email, very simple button, a few steps, and you push that order out to your customer. And there was one other question I thought was funny, is Mike asked, why do you and I both have the same earphones? <laughs> so I thought it was pretty funny. So I will tell you, hey, Mike, check it out. It's the, it's the Bluetooth 730. Um, you know, I can tell you from my standpoint, audio quality is fantastic right i have a couple pairs of headphones and myself here i had beats for audio i had a b and w set of headset for some of my um you know advanced audio options but i can tell you that this has become my go-to headset seamlessly uh, migrate from the laptop connected to webex to my iphone uh great streaming through spotify and other things and you know it even connects back into uh, you know, my home theater equipment. And, and if you're into VR, it does work with the Oculus as well, right? So pretty cool um, to take a look at that, but check out the 730 Bluetooth headset on Cisco site. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love these things. I, uh, they're my go-to when I'm hopping into a meeting and need to block everything else out. It has, uh, has the uh, noise cancellation, of course, and then it also has ambient mode. So I flip that switch up, I can hear everything around me and still listen to music while I'm plugging away working during the day. So. Uh, a really good headset, and uh, they, they plug right into the WebEx desk, uh, desk hub. So if you have that at work, then you can take your headset back and forth, charge it while you're working there. Um, really good setup there. But uh, Mike, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure uh, working with you on these uh, solutions labs. Um, a lot of good information here. I, I encourage you to reach out to our Cisco teams at DNH. Uh, we can work you through quotes, we can work you through product selection, everything that you need there uh, on the US side, Cisco Specialist at dnh.com. And uh, doo -doo -doo, the Canada, I'm forgetting just off the top of my head, uh, but we'll have that in the resource links as well. So uh, contact your con Canada team and they can help you with the same stuff. Uh, so uh, always happy to help there. With that, 
I want to wish everybody a great week. And uh, Mike, thanks again uh, to both you and Cisco for your support on this. And uh, have a good week, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Good to see everybody. Thank you, Aaron. Absolutely.